The purpose of this mini lecture is to talk about uh, percent composition and percent composition problems um, as it applies to various substances. First of all, when we're dealing with percent, remember that percent means per 100. And in this case, we are calculating it for substances not on the basis of how many particles show up in the substance, but what the mass of the substances are. For example, if we look at hydrogen peroxide, H2O2, if we were just to look at the atoms, the particles that make up that compound, uh, we would look at it and say, well, the hydrogen, there's, there's two, and the oxygen, there's two. So on a particle basis, half the atoms are hydrogen, or 50% of the atoms are hydrogen, and 50% are oxygen atoms. But we're really not, for this type of problem, we're not really concerned with it on a particle basis. If we look at this, we say, well, an oxygen atom has, a, has significantly more mass than a hydrogen atom. And if we were to calculate it, we'd find that 6% of the mass is due to hydrogen and 94% of the mass is due to oxygen. And we'll take a look and say, how do you make those calculations? So how you do it is, first of all, you would start by assuming that you have one mole of the compound and you calculate the molar mass. Once you've calculated the molar mass, you're going to figure out what each element contributed to the total. And you're going to use this formula. You're going to take the mass contributed by the element divided by the total mass of the compound times 100, and that will give the percentage due to that particular element. Now when you're done, you can check your answer by adding up all of your percentages. And these numbers should add up to be very close to 100, if not exactly 100. You may be off a, a little bit. You, you, depending upon where you round your numbers to, you could be anywhere in the 99 to a 101 range just because um, everything rounded in the same direction. Uh, so if you're somewhere in that range, you, you would say that, OK, our answer makes sense. So let's go through an example. This question is, what is the percent composition of sodium sulfate, Na2SO4? And so when you're looking at this, if the, if the question doesn't specifically tell you which element we're interested in, um, you're expected to calculate for all of the elements present in it. So our first step is to calculate a molar mass. And if you don't know how to do this step, you can watch my video on calculating the molar mass. So you'll know how to calculate a molar mass. And then we're going to analyze this for each individual element. So we look at the sodium. And so to calculate the percent sodium, we have to look and say, well, how much mass of that total 142.04 grams in the mole of sodium sulfate, how much did sodium contribute? So, well, like, it contributed 45.98 grams out of the total. So we put the 45.98, and we're going to divide that by the, by the total mass, multiply by 100, and find out that the percent, that's, the percent of the total mass that's due to the sodium is 32.37. So we'll write that up here. Next, we'll analyze for sulfur. And the sulfur contributed 32.06 to the total. So we take its contribution divided by the total mass times 100 and find that the percent that sulfur is 22.57%. We'll repeat this process for the oxygen. 64 grams was due to the oxygen, which means that the oxygen's uh, percent composition was 45.06% oxygen. Now to check our work, we can just go and take those three numbers and add them up. And yes, it checks. It's, it's right on 100%. So now, now let's take a look at how we might apply this. Another question could be, how many grams of sulfur can be recovered from 238 grams of sodium sulfate. So we're looking to say, well, in order to figure this out, we need to figure out, well, what's the percentage um, of sulfur in the sodium sulfate? And going back to our previous calculation, we see that the sulfur 
um, accounts for 22.57%. So we'll take that 22.57% and remember that percent means per 100. So we'll divide that by 100 and we'll multiply that by the total grams of the sodium sulfate and find that we can recover uh, 53.7 grams of sulfur. So if we broke down that sodium sulfate into its elements, we could potentially recover 53.7 grams of sulfur. And as always, we should check our answers to see if they are reasonable. And we look at this and, and say, first of all, um, we shouldn't come up with any number that's greater than 238 grams. If, we, if somehow you, you make a mistake in this problem and you end up with a number of larger than the number of grams you started with, you know you've got a problem. Next we say 22.57. Hmm, that's a little less than 25%. 25% would be a quarter of it. Um, 238, we could, we could round just for the purpose of estimating. We could round that to 240. Say 240 divided by 4, that should give us about 60 grams. We should have a little bit less than 60 grams, and sure enough, that's, that's where we've got our answer. Seems reasonable. Now try this process on this question. How many grams of cadmium can be obtained from 197 grams of cadmium sulfide, CDS? So I would recommend pausing the video at this point and trying to work through this problem. And I'll post the answers in a second. First of all, we need to calculate our percent that is cadmium in this problem. So we have to calculate the molar mass first. Now this time, all we're interested in is, is the cadmium. So we'll just look at the percent cadmium. We'll say it contributed 112.41 grams to that total 144.47 grams. So multiply that by 100 and say, well, this compound is 77.809% cadmium. And now we just need to find out, well, 77.809 divided by 100 times that total amount of cadmium sulfide, the 197 grams, tells us that we could recover 153 grams of cadmium from that 197 grams of cadmium sulfide. And again, we look at our answer and say, does this make sense? Well, we could round some numbers to make our math a little bit easier, and we'd say, well, it's 77.8. That's a little bit more than 75%. 75% would be three quarters. And 197 grams of what we're looking at is about 200. And we say, well, three quarters of 200 is about 150. Okay, 153, we're, we're right in the ballpark. Our answer at least checks for being reasonable.